Hi, this is Christoph speaking. As you have probably already heard, all traditional lectures are cancelled and will be replaced by some online lectures in one shape or form. In our case, when it comes to the digital methods course, we will provide you with some YouTube uh, lectures or videos. Okay, so today I will be talk talking about the Infrabel exercise, or more specifically, how I solved the data collection phase, what I came up with. So where does this fit within the general outline, let's say, of this course? First of all, it's a good idea to watch this video in the next week or maybe the, the week after that, two weeks after you have provided us or submitted your own data collection uh, proposal in the form of a data collection protocol and logbook, which is something that you did last week. Second, it's meant for students who are working on the Infrabel exercise. That's pretty uh, obvious, I guess. Okay, so what is the end goal of this mini lecture, let's say? First of all, I want to present you one solution to the data collection phase. Of course, this is just, and just to reiterate, this is just a solution. If you have come up with a better solution uh, or a similar solution, but you've collected, collected other data, you're perfectly uh, okay with just using your own data sets. But if you want to use the data sets that I produced, you're welcome to do that as well. Again, this has no impact whatsoever on your final grade for this course. The second goal here is to reflect on some issues of validity, reliability and troubles that I encountered during the data collection phase and how I solved them. But for more information on that, see the protocol and the logbook at Euphora. And the third and final goal is to very briefly present you with the data sets, the final data sets that I uh, collected. So this is where we start with the idea that Infrabel is very proud of the fact that nine out of 10 trains ride on time. But the comment in the problem statement says that, well, we don't really care the, about the amount of trains that ride on time, but we care about the amount of passengers that experience a delay. So that the majority of the trains between two very small villages in Belgium right on time is not that relevant. It's more relevant that trains that are very popular, for example, between Brussels and Ghent, Brussels and Leuven, that they ride on time. And if there is a delay in these stations, well, we want to uh, have a metric that incorporates the fact that these are very popular stations and a lot of people experience a delay. And that those delays in very popular stations are more problematic than delays in um, less popular stations. In other words, we want to do better than this. This is our end goal. We can provide a perfect metric. We just want to do better than this. We want to, in other words, calculate a metric based on passenger level, how many people experience a delay, instead of on train level, like Infrabel does now. So if you translate this into a client question, basically it comes down to this. So could you calculate a more meaningful metric for measuring the impact of delays on the Belgian railway network by estimating the amount of people impacted by a train delay in a specific day of the week? So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, etc. If you translate this to a more specific research question, comes down to this how many train passengers in Belgium and again I indicated train passengers in Belgium in red this means that this is a, a concept or a construct that we need to um, operationalize here so how many train passengers in Belgium are experiencing a delay in a specific day of the week and at which train stations so I want basically at the end of the exercise a breakdown of for example, Monday, how many people experience a delay on Monday in Belgium and which stations are primarily responsible for that? Probably Brussels or Ghent, or this is a wild or not so wild uh, guess. Okay, so the mindset that you need to have here is that we want to give uh, some better estimation and work with what you got. There is no perfect solution so, for this. Um, so we need to base our estimation on very, very rough numbers uh, with a very large margin of error. 
And some decisions that I will make here and that you will make, I hope, uh, during this exercise are simply based on common sense and this is okay. For example, we could weigh IC trains, which are tra trains between uh, popular cities. We could weigh delays of IC trains a little bit higher than trains between small villages or stop trains as they're called. And how much you weigh those popular trains between cities more, well, that's just up to you. You just use your common sense. And this is perfectly okay. You need to realize that a lot of real world policies are based on calculations, based on very rough common sense assumptions. For example, when it comes to the economic growth of a certain country, these are just estimations that can be off by, well, in Belgium, <laughs> by a couple of uh, billions. Second, we want to calculate our metric based on raw data. So we don't want to use the data that already has gone through all kinds of calculations coming from Infrabel. Because Infrabel measures delays in a particular way, right? So a delay is only a delay when a train uh, has a delay of uh, more than six minutes. Well, we don't want to uh, include all these kinds of assumptions in our data. We want to start from scratch and basically calculate our own delay metric. So we don't trust Infrabelt. That is basically uh, the main idea here. In an ideal scenario, we would have individual journey data for every Belgian train passenger. So we would know that uh, person A takes a train in Ghent, uh, goes to Brussels Central, and then from Brussels Central takes another train and goes to whatever, Leuven for example. But we don't have that, right? So we only have, in Belgium anyway, a very rough estimation of how many people board a train in a particular day, but that's about it. We can't follow individuals here. Okay, so let's go back to the bare minimum then. What do we need at least to have just a very straightforward answer to our research question? Well, we need first some estimation uh, on the amount of passengers for each train station in Belgium. That's one. And two, we need some data on the planned and actual arrival and departure times for all trains in Belgium for one single week because we want to um, know for every day of the week how many uh, passengers experience a delay. Okay, so these two things, this is the bare minimum. Let's look at the first requirement, an estimation of the amount of passengers for each train station in Belgium. Well, you can find that online pretty easily if you Google Aantal Passagiers NMBS, for example. There you go, first link. Service opgestapte Desius. You can download cookies, okay? You can download the brochure here. And there you have it. So, for example, let's go to Ghent. There you go. Ghent St. Peter's has 56,000 and then a little bit more passengers in a weekday. And you also have estimates for a Saturday and a Sunday. But all weekdays have here the same estimates. So you can already see that this is a very rough estimation because you know the amount of passengers most likely fluctuates throughout the week uh, as well. But we have just one number for a weekday. Okay, cool. We have that. Now we can, we have to convert this um, to a CSV file. So this is a PDF file. You can't just really open it up in Excel and do some calculations with it. But if you just Google PDF to CSV, let's see first link sums out. Okay. I add a file. Uh, let's say I go to my downloads folder right over here and then, okay. Convert now. And we're done and, and download. Okay, there we go. So if you split it then, uh, text to columns. You basically have the file. There's some messy rows here that we could just delete. 
And remember, for each page, you have these kind of messy rows. But still, if you do that, you have a neat table containing an estimate of the amount of passengers in a train station. So, okay, this is the first thing that we need, right? Okay. Now, as some students already told me, well, it, these are estimations from uh, October 2018. So these are dated, true, but it's all we got and it's all that even Infrabel uh, has. It's not that Infrabel or as a better estimate than this. So that's all we got. So we have to use this. Okay. Second bare minimum requirement is data on the plan and an actual arrival and departure times uh, for all trains in Belgium for one week. Okay. So if you Google, let's say open data infrabel or data infrabel, you immediately have first link The platform of Infrabel and Infrabel just I think last year opened up their uh, data infrastructure and provides us with all kinds of open data sets and it refreshes these data sets uh, every day. And this is the one you probably came up with. So Rubik gave us von Stipthead raw figures of, um, of delays right here and you can just export it to a CSV, right? This is what we want. The download takes a while. Okay, now we have our data. Let's open it up. So this is the data set that uh, Infrabel um, refreshes each and every day. So let's see what it says, the information, you have it here. This data set is updated daily with the figures of the previous day. Okay, so there we go. You can see here date of departure, um, when the train actually arrives, when it should arrive, and the same for the departure. And you can see even here that NMBS calculated a delay metric for you. And you have also the name of the station. It's okay, this is what we exactly need, right? We need this, but time seven. We need this for each and every day of the week. It is a Friday, I want it for a Saturday, Sunday, etc. Based on this, we could calculate basically this kind of table. We could calculate for each station and for each day with the limitation that a Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday, etc. all have the same uh, estimates uh, for their passenger number, but okay. We could calculate for each day the proportion of trains delayed based on doing some data wrangling on these seven CSV files. And we can match it with a passenger estimate of a specific day in a specific station in a single day. And then we can just multiply column three here with column four, if you exclude the station column, which is basically your ID column. And if you multiply these two numbers, you basically have an estimate. So proportion of trains delayed in Gens, in Peters, on a Monday, we could find out that 10% of trains uh, experience a delay. And if 10,000 passengers go through the state or board a train in Ghent, then a thousand passengers experience a delay, right? And we could, add, could do that for each and every station and each and every day. And then we have our basically our solution. This is the most bare bones, let's say weighted by popularity figure we could estimate. But there are three, um, let's say critical side notes here. One, we assume that passengers are divided equally over all trains, which is not the case. So a, a train between Ghent and Brussels will be more crowded than a, a, a train between um, Ghent and some small village. Second, we also assume that the popularity of a single station is distributed equally throughout the day, so that a train that has a delay during rush hour, 8 a.m., has a similar impact than during noon, let's say. And this is probably not true. So we need to take into account of the fact that the popularity of a station, the passengers in a station that board a train, also fluctuate throughout the day. And the third thing is that we assume that this week, so the week we are in right now, 
and or the week that you uh, collected uh, data of that's probably a week somewhere in February or March is representative of a typical week. So these are three critical remarks here. And I try to uh, take this into account for my final solution. But for you guys, I only expected you to come up with this so that you collected the CSV file for the passengers, the estimations of the amount of passengers, and that you collected seven CSV files containing the uh, planned and actual arrival and departure times of trains in Belgian stations. That's it. This is what I expected. What comes next is basically a, a reflection on how to make a more valid estimate than that. So first thing, we assume that passengers are divided equally over all trains. Not true. But as you can see here in the file with the um, departure and arrival times, we have some information on a type of train that arrives in a particular station. So let's see, we have some IC trains and these trains are usually more popular. And then you have some L trains or also called stop trains, which are less crowded, usually. So we could, for example, make a differentiation here, although we, don't, we simply don't know how popular a particular train is, right? So you could, for a Ghent station on a Monday, make two estimations. So one row for IC trains and one for stop trains or L trains, so that you can calculate the proportion of trains delayed for each category and you can also just divide the, 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 the estimation of the amount of passengers uh, between those two categories. And for example, and this is just a common sense estimate that you distribute 60% of the passengers that board a train in Ghent to the IC trains and only 40% to the L trains. Now there's no statistical or whatever reason why 60% is a correct estimate. If you say, no, I want to do 70%, that's fine. You just have to be transparent towards whoever you're communicating your end result, uh, what kind of decisions that you made, even if these are just common sense and not based on some mathematical formula, right? So, but this is what I will be doing. I will distribute 60%, around 60% to the IC trains in every station. Okay, second problem here is that we assume that the popularity of a single station is distributed equally throughout the day. And Infobel has no de detailed figures on how the passengers fluctuate throughout the day. It just doesn't have that. But Google has some kind of estimation. And there's even one student who asked me how he could scrape these Google estimates, which is great. But um, it's not very uh, feasible for you guys to do that. You can do that in REPL, but I will show you uh, what I uh, did uh, to scrape uh, Google in just a moment. So Google has some estimates and these estimates are basically the popular times graphs that are available in any place. So let's go to now. I hope this works because of the Corona crisis. Uh, it's not very crowded uh, anywhere right now, but okay, let's go to Google Maps and say that we want to know, no, let's do just Ghent Station. Oh, this is not the station I want, sorry. Ghent St. Peter's, there you go. So as you can see here, it estimates right now that it's less busy than usual. Well, yes, obviously, since the corona crisis, there's no one there right now. So this seems like a rather valid estimate. But it has some estimations for every hour throughout the week, how many people um, there are in Kent Station. It's not expressed in, a, in an absolute number, but in a relative number. So um, one bar can be 100% busy. This is the most busy a station can get and could go all the way to a 0%, as in it's uh, there is no one there so okay we could use this kind of inform information on the uh, distribution of passengers throughout a day um, from google and this is something that i will scrape google has no popular times endpoint in their apa so you can't use their own apa you have to go rogue basically 
and we have, you have to scrape Google. And this is no easy task because we don't know the corresponding URL for each and every station. So we can't just guess based on the station name. Um, for example, you have here Gets and Bitters in the URL. Well, if I say Brussel Central, it won't work. You see, <laughs> it just gave, give me, gives me uh, Jens and Bitters again because the URL is also, also includes information on the GPS coordinates and we don't have that for each and every station. So this is problematic. We need some other way of scraping a website, which is not based on a strategy of exploiting the URL structure, which which is something that you most of the time do. And it's also something that I, for example, I did in the movies exercise. So I wrote a script for the movies exercise. I just exploited the URL structure. I can't do that here. And it's also because Google Maps contains a lot of dynamic elements, JavaScript in their uh, page. And these elements are not scrapable using traditional web scraping tools. So these popular times graphs you see here, there are elements, or these are elements you can interact with. And it's something typical that uh, is not scraped when you just load the HTML code immediately into your cache, into your environment in Python, for example. So we need some other tool, but I'll talk about that later. Then the third critical comment here is that, well, we assume that this week is representative of a typical week. But what if this week is exceptional in some way? And what about seasonal variation? So <laughs> since we are living in um, exceptional times right now with the corona crisis, this is a good example. So if you scrape the passenger data of uh, this week or next week, well, obviously this is not representative of how the train network uh, works in a usual week, right? So you have almost no passengers, so everything will, there will be less delays probably because of that, because it's less crowded. And there are also less uh, trains, uh, which is also a factor that will, you know, impact the amount of delays. Probably there will be less delays now or this week than uh, during uh, a regular week. And to fix this, I used a constructed week method. And a constructed week method tends to yield more reliable results. And this means that we will con collect three, in this case, I opted for three constructed weeks from the 2019 data of Infobel. So I will collect three random Mondays, three random Tuesdays, three random Wednesdays, etc., from 2019. And I will fetch the, the planned and actual arrival and departure dates for these uh, 21 days in total, right? Three constructed weeks. But we would like to exclude, or I would like to exclude, national holidays and school vacations from our sampling frame as well, because these periods are usually characterized by less train passengers. And this is something that is very predictable, that in you know in the middle of August, that the train network is usually less busy than uh, on a Monday uh, morning, for example, during uh, March. So our goal is here is to sample typical work weeks Right now, you could argue that I shouldn't do that and I should just scrape three random Mondays from 2019 because, well, vacations and holidays are just part of our, let's say, reality. They exist, it's not something really exceptional. So, if I just scrape or select a holiday or school vacation day, well, then that's just what it is, right? And it shouldn't uh, delete these from our sampling frame, but I choose here to focus my analysis on work weeks because I can just basically predict that some weeks in a year uh, will yield very different results. But you could argue about that. Okay. I would like to exclude some exceptional events as well. For example, a day where a general strike has been held. But luckily the Infobel open data platform keeps a list of incidents on uh, their platform. And we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. So in total, I wrote four scripts for this Git data collection. And you could collect all the data that I collected, except for uh, the Google Popular Times figures, which is not very feasible. But you could collect perfectly the uh, uh, weekly data on the planned and actual arrival and departure times of trains in Belgium. You could just access 
uh, this page right here every day for one week and download the CSV and keep uh, a little folder with seven CSV files. And there you have it. You have data of one particular week, although it's a particular week, right? It's not a constructed week, but still you could collect the, the weekly data. You can access the scripts on uh, REPL. However, the, the holiday script is the only one that will work in REPL. So this is a script that gives you, or will gives you as an, uh, give you as an output, a list of days with holidays in uh, Belgium and school vacations. But for the other scripts, you need a desktop developer environment to run the other scripts. Like for example, uh, PyCharm here, which is the one I'm using all the time. So the other scripts you can just check out. You, I also annotated these scripts and explained how they worked, uh, how they work very, in yeah, very much detail, but don't actually run them. Okay, so for step one, estimating the amount of passengers in a train station, we already have the general numbers. Uh, however, I converted the PDF from the NMBS website, not through um, an online converter, like I showed you earlier but I use a, a little a Python script. And then I um, created a Google or popular time scraper, which was very challenging, but pretty cool to do. And then step number two for estimating the amount of delays in a particular day in a particular station. I first of all created a list of national holidays and school vacations, which is a script that works. So the third script here, you can actually run in REPL. And then I sampled three constructed weeks from the 2019 data. So I collected uh, the entire data from 2019 uh, automatically, and I selected also automatically uh, three constructed weeks. We'll see later how I did that. So part one basically comes down to this. So I have my estimation of the amount of passengers in a single day, in a single station, and then to know how I should divide these passengers Throughout the day in a station, I created a popular times uh, scraper. And so this, this is how the popular time scraper works. It starts off with the station names as provided by the PDF file from, again, from Infrabel. So this is what it takes as input. Aalst, Aalskerk, Kerrebroek, Aalter, Aarschot, Aarschelen, etc. Okay. What it does then it loads this column into Python and it starts an automated Google Chrome browsing session. And it uses a module called Selenium. And Selenium is used to literally simulate a browsing session as if you are a human or as if the script, I must say, is a human. So you can click on elements, you can fill in forms, you can scroll, uh, you can do whatever a human can do with a web page using Selenium. And for each and every of these stations, I search. Uh, the station name on Google Maps, and I added the word train because for some reason this seemed to work. This gives me most of the time the train station of a particular city, such as Ghent, Brussels. I access the station's page. I scrape the popular times graph once it's loaded. That's step three. And then I just store it in a data frame. And at the end, I have a huge data frame containing all the popular times graphs as available on Google Maps. So, this is how it works. Normally, I also made a, a little a YouTube video uh, for you guys, but now I can just, thanks to the Corona crisis, demonstrate here. So this is what the script does. I execute it. Okay. So it starts off automatically a browsing session. So I'm not doing anything right now. This is all the script that does that. So it types in I'll strain in the search bar and you can see it has two options to choose from and it will look for the first option that contains um, the word train station or spoorwegmaatschappij or something that indicates that this is a train station so the script says here haven't found a specific location for us looking for a specific page and it will look for the appropriate element and there we go it accesses the Alst page, and as you can see, it scrolls through the popular times graphs, graph, and it fetches the, the the name of the day, and 
the figures behind the bars you're seeing here, how popular Al's station is in a particular hour, in a particular day. Okay, then up, it goes to Al's Kettebroek. It takes does the second, as you can see, the second station mentioned in um, the table of uh, Infrabel here. And again, it searches for popular times graph. It will be unable to find such graph because it does the Google doesn't have a sufficient amount of data available for us as this specific station. So then it goes, or it continues to alter, etc., etc. Okay, so if you do that, in the end, you have this table. There you go. So a specific station, as provided by the NMBS um, file. Then what Google came up with, and the category um, of this particular place in Google Maps, it will be or Veerhalte or Transstation or Spoorwegmaatschappij, something like that. This is what I searched for if I had to uh, make a decision uh, in the menu. Okay, which what kind of uh, place I want to scrape? It has had to be one of these categories or Veerhalte, etc. Then the day of the week, as you can see here, and then the hour of the day. So four o'clock, sorry, there you go. Four o'clock, five o'clock, etc. And then how busy it is during that uh, time period, right? So for example, if you go to Ghent, and this is Ghent Tamport, fine. You can see that on a Monday, Monday, let's see, Monday, five o'clock, it's 33% busy. This means that when you take the most popular time of Station Gent Dampoort, then Monday, 17 o'clock, will have one third of uh, the amount of passengers than during the most popular time um, in Gent Dampoort, right? So 100% would mean it is never as popular in this specific station as now. And 32% just means take 32% of that most popular times in this station. And there you have it. And the question, of course, is still how do you translate these numbers to specific um, passenger numbers, right? Because we know, for example, that in uh, Jens St. Peters, um, there are 56,000 passengers each day. Well, okay, then still we need to translate these relative percentages to specific passenger numbers. So this is up to you to decide how you do that. I'm not really sure yet how I will do that either. And again, for some stations such as Al Skerbrook, there's not enough location data available. So we need to take that into account as well that we have missings. And even more, for some stations, they don't have a popular times graph at all. So when it comes to Al Skerbrook, they have or they had at one particular time um, some estimates um, for example a Sunday but for a Saturday there is not enough location data for this specific day in Alter there is no um, no popular times graph at all right so this is even a larger piece of missing data okay now we have our first part of the data collection we have one an estimation of how many passengers board a train for each train station in Belgium. And we have a week estimate, a Saturday and a Sunday estimate. And two, we have an estimate on how you could distribute these passengers in a station in a particular day throughout the day. And this hour by hour level, thanks to our Google popular times data. Okay, so we have these two data sets. Now for the second part. For the second part, I will load the entire 2019 data into uh, Python and I will construct three random weeks of these two 2019 data files and I will uh, exclude one national holidays and vacations uh, from the sampling frame and I will potentially I won't do that now this is something for the data wrangling phase but maybe I want to uh, exclude extreme events such as suicides or a strike that took place on a specific day Right. Okay, so when it comes to the incidents, 
Infrabel just has a file on that. Let's see. Let's go to data and then incidents. There you go. Most important incidents and what impact they had on delays. There you go. Now, still, the question remains how you translate this kind of data to um, to your final uh, data set that you will obtain in after the data wrangling phase. But still, you have here the specific lines and a specific day. So that means that, yeah, if there's a lot of delay because of a very, mm, very particular incident, then we can just delete the line on a particular day, right? But this is something for later, but I already have this file here. Okay, this is our third data set. And then when it comes to excluding the vacations and holidays, I wrote a little script. So you could do this manually as well. For example, if you Google Vistag and Belgium, uh, let's say 2019, since we collect data from 2019. Okay. Um, yes, this is not a neat table. I want a website. It really has, so oh, same website, it really has a knee table. Okay, look, this looks better. You see? So we want to exclude these kind of days and we also want to um, exclude the school holidays, right? But we don't want it in a format like this. We want to have a specific day list to exclude. So 24th of December, 25th of December, 26th of December, and, and so on and so on. And I wrote a little script and you can access the script on REPL. Again, the uh, links to the REPL files are just in the PowerPoint here. Where are they again? Uh, sorry. Okay, here. Right. So if you go to REPL, and I will access it from my account. There you go. So it takes as input the Facebook Belgium website, and then it does some wrangling to come up with a neat list of days. Let's run it. And there we go. And this is our output here, right? So in the REPL environment, you have a new CSV file now. And it's a very clean CSV file with a date, what kind of category it is, is it a school vacation or a national holiday, and what is the number of the day, right? So the 1st of January is the first day of the year. I want to exclude day number one from my sampling frame. Don't want to scrape that day. And you have a neat list. Again, you can just copy paste it into whatever program you want to paste it in, such as Notepad is a good example, and then holiday list. And I can just open it up in um, Excel. Oh, not like that. Data from text. Where did I save it again? Desktop. So this is just the usual, right? So, okay, comma, finish, okay. Okay, there you go. Now you can use it. Okay, so now I have a list of my particular incidents and a list um, of uh, national holidays I want to exclude. Okay, what the script does then is, and this is a script also available on REPL, but you can't run it. But what my script does is it downloads the monthly data sets of 2019. You can see them here. So this is a list of CSV files as provided by Infrabel. Now I noticed that they actually changed this data set recently, like a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago, something like that. And now they include uh, data from 2018, 17, 16, and I think even 2015, which is a pity because it, because like a month ago, it was just the data from 2019. And then, um, of course, up until now, so January 2020. But okay, still, um, I can download all the 2019 data. Uh, first of all, 
uh, sorted this file. So I download um, January, February, and then uh, March, and so on, April, and so on, and so on. Okay. Now what the script does then, it outputs or it subsets in these large data sets, because these are millions and millions of lines, it subsets each and every day and it writes a CSV file for each day in the year. And this is what we get, right? Each day of the year from one to 365 is outputted in a folder. Of course, all automatically, I don't uh, save these files manually. And then what the script does is it constructs lists of days by weekday. So in this particular case, it creates a list. This is my Python environment on my desktop. This is not REPL. It creates a list of days in the week. And if I call that, you can see that, okay, what are the Mondays in 2019? Well, it's day 259, day 133, day seven, and so on. And it does that for Tuesdays as well. And it also excludes um, all the holidays and school vacations I scraped here. So I said, okay, I want all Mondays and all Tuesdays, etc. but I don't want day 357, 358, because these are school vacations, right? Okay, what it does then is it selects by day, three random days from this folder, right? And uh, puts these files in one single data frame, and there you have it. Then you have 21 days, three constructed weeks, three random Mondays, Tuesdays, etc., selected from these lists of days uh, on my computer. And this is the end result. So we have three Mondays, etc. You can see the number of arrivals there, and the days in a sample as well. As you can see, no days in July and August, which makes sense since these are school vacations, a couple of days in January, April, etc. So these days are just chosen randomly by an algorithm, um, by a random number generator I used in Python. So I had no um, say in any way uh, which uh, days or dates to choose. So you end up with these five data sets, right? So you have uh, a general data set, there you go. Uh, with all the arrivals of the three constructed weeks. This is a rather large data set of 230 uh, megabytes, but you can load this into Power BI and work with it. I, uh, I did test that. And then you have the holiday vacations. You don't really use that for the remainder of the exercise, but okay. The incidents, which is something that you could use to filter certain lines in certain days. And then of course our station, um, estimates of the number of passengers and a popularity by hour. These five data sets. If you want more information on the variables in the data sets, you can always uh, check question 16 of the data uh, protocol on Ufora. And the protocol and the logbook and the data sets are obviously all available on Ufora. Okay, just to recap, all the scripts are available on Ufora or you could access them online on REPL. The links are in the PowerPoint again, somewhere in the slides but you can also only run the create list of holidays and vacation script that I just showed you on REPL. For the remainder of the scripts, you need a, a offline a desktop EDI, such as um, PyCharm. So no, you don't need to know how to code these scripts. Don't worry about that. Just have a basic understanding of what the goal of these scripts are and what, how they uh, work, what they do, but you don't need to be able to code them. So don't worry about that. Okay, again, everything is available on Ufora. Now, you need to be able to reflect on this solution critically and compare them with your own solution. So do not learn the protocol and the logbook, etc., by heart. That's not the point at all of these exercises. Now, now what? So you have this, you have these five data sets. Now for the next deadline, which is 20th of April, the question is how you get from this uh, bunch of data sets to a single data set so you can answer this research question. So this is the goal here, all right? So you'll probably need to do some joins, you need to do some uh, aggregation, 
for example, we want a proportion, um, or this is anyway what I will call collate. You, you you can do whatever you want, right? But I will call collate a proportion of trains delayed in a particular station, in a particular uh, day, in a particular hour, right? Because we have hour level data now, thanks to um, the Google uh, Maps uh, popular times graph. And to do these operations, you can do them all in Power BI. For more information on that, check the tutorials of Frederik uh, on uh, YouTube. Right there, he had uh, he uh, made uh, a lot of interesting data wrangling tutorials. Okay, so that's about it. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me by email. And I wish you all a very uh, nice day. Bye now.